Hey guys, well, let's do radio communication in the hip. The hip has three different radios, and although you'll only find yourself using one of them the vast majority of the time, let's go over all three and the interphone system as well and talk about how they all work so you understand in case you do need to use them. First of all, there's some mission editor setup we need to do because a couple of these radios can function on preset channels, which are set by the ground crew. So in DCS world, that means mission editor. So let's go do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so here we are in the mission editor. This is the map I've been using for all these videos. And we're going to set up a couple of things first of all. So if we pick one of our helicopters, we've got a hot start here just on a parking pad. And we need to set up some radio channels for it because two of our radios can use presets. So we go to the radio presets tab. And the R863, that's our primary, has 20 different channels available to it. And then the R828, that's the VHF FM radio, has 10 available to it. Now our tower has four different frequencies and these two radios alone can reach three of them. So let's put in on channel three, 119.75. That's the VHF, the upper VHF frequency for the tower. And then on channel five, we'll put in the UHF frequency, which is 251.75. Then if we come down to the R828, the FM radio, and on channel seven, we will leave it at 40. So this uh, tower does have a frequency at 40.15, which we could tune to, but it's an AM only for the ATC and this radio is FM only. So let's just leave it at 40, the default, and we'll, uh, we'll set a ground unit instead to transmit on channel seven on 40 megahertz. And we'll see if we can listen into that. So that's pretty much it for that one. And if you would come over here, I've set this APC on the ground over here. And it has a couple of advanced actions to set the tune to channel 7, 40 FM. And then it's going to play a sound file. So we can just tune in and listen to that. So that's pretty much it for mission setup. These are things that the helicopter is not going to tell you in the game. You're not going to be able to find these frequencies anywhere unless you're using SRS online. So you kind of want to know them ahead of time. If you have control over the mission, make sure they're set to something useful and you write them down. Otherwise, those radios are no good to you. So that's it for ground setup. Let's jump back into the cockpit and start taking a look at the radios. All right, so we're in the cockpit and let's have a quick look at some of the different instruments we'll be using for radio setup. So from the pilot commander seat here on the left, if you look straight up, There are two things. Um, yeah, there are two panels right here. So this one up here has your volume control for communications inside and for communications outside. You have a radio select. This one determines which radio is active at any given time. You can only have one active at once. So UHF is the primary. HF is your long range high frequency. This is a VHF FM. SW is not implemented. ARC-9 and ARC-UD are both navigation modes, which we'll get to in a future video. So we're going to leave this on UHF, because that's the one we're going to start with. And then finally, you have this ICS slash radio toggle, which you'll only toggle to ICS when you need to talk to the ground crew. The rest of the time, it should be on radio. So then for tuning the primary radio, you have this panel over here to the right, which has the toggle between AM and FM and lets you select through the 20 preset channels on the primary radio. So that's pretty much it for the pilot commander, other than uh, a mic or a radio trigger. If we jump into the middle seat, and we look down, on the autopilot panel, at the very bottom right, here's this 127.5, that's the tuning, the manual tuning for the R863, the primary radio. And you can see it's got quite a range to it, so you should be able to tune into just about everything that you'll need. Um, if you're a regular Hoggett flyer, you'll find yourself on this channel fairly often, for example. Now, the flight engineer also has a toggle a little bit above that to toggle between manual tuning and preset tuning. So up here. So depending which way this is determines whether you use these, these dials here to tune your frequency or the knobs that the pilot commander has in front of him. So we'll leave it on manual. And we're going to tune to the VHF frequency here in just a minute. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to quickly show you the other two radios. So jump over to the pilot navigator seat with a two on the keyboard. And then look down here. He's got the other two radios here. So the VHF is this one. 
and then the high frequency AM is this one here. Pilot Navigator also has a copy of this radio select panel that the pilot commander has, where you have your volume knobs, your radio select, and your ICS radio toggle. Those will stay in sync, it doesn't matter who uses it. If I flip on one, it will flip on the other at the same time. You should be able to see that moving way over there. So that's pretty much it for the different instruments that you'll be using. So let's go tune our R863. So to tune the primary radio, we've got the option between either preset or manual. So we'll put it on manual and we'll tune to 119 decimal 75. We just spin these until we get what we're looking for. The last one handles two digits at once. So 119 decimal 75. And then we'll contact the ground crew and we'll just say abort takeoff. All right, and then they also have a UHF frequency on 251.75, so we can tune to that. Same idea, key the mic, request to take off. So now we also have the option, if we tune off of that to something else, go to presets. <clears throat> we can, in front of the pilot commander, choose our presets from here. So we can flip between AM, FM, the ground crew is always AM. And if you remember, we set channels three and five. So we'll just spin this to three for the VHF, key the mic and abort takeoff. And then we can spin that to five, which is the UHF and request to take off. So that's it for tuning the primary radio. You can do it through manual mode or preset mode just by selecting from the flight engineer's seat. This is the one you'll use the vast majority of the time because it can reach the vast majority of uh, frequencies that will be in use in both single player and multiplayer missions. Okay, so the next radio to tune is the Yadro 1A long range high frequency AM radio. So first thing we need to do is come up and select it on this panel here. It's the HF or high frequency. And then make sure this is on radio. And then the panel for it is down here. So it's this panel here at the bottom right of this little box. And this is only manually tunable. We can only dial in the frequency we want. It goes up to from here from two megahertz all the way up to about 17.9 megahertz. This knob is your megahertz selector, and you can see the tuning light that lights up as I flip through. When that goes out, it means the radio has finished tuning to the desired frequency and is ready to use. So we're gonna contact the tower on their high frequency, which is 4.625. So we select four on megahertz, six, two, and five. So now if we hit the same radio activated radio trigger, we see Yadro 1A up in the top right now, letting us know that this is the radio we're going to be transmitting on and receiving on, and we can request a takeoff. So that's pretty much it for that radio. Our last radio to tune is the R828 low range VHF FM radio. So once again, we have to select it, come up here, select VHF, make sure we're on radio. And then it's down here at this radio box as well. So this radio is preset only. There is no manual tuning for it. It's just got the 10 preset channels, which you set in the mission editor and have to know what they are. Otherwise it's useless to you. So you make sure it's on up here, make sure it's set to voice over here, make sure the volume is up, make sure we're on squelch and then tune our channel. So in the mission editor, we set channel seven, 40 megahertz FM, which will tune us into that APC. And then you notice that we don't hear anything now. And that's because this radio doesn't automatically tune itself. We have to press and hold the tune button, the radio tuner button, this little white one over the AGC label. And when we do that, we'll see a second light appear under tune. And once that second light goes out, it means the radio has finished tuning and is ready to use. So if we press and hold that now, there's our light. 
And there's our sound. So this is a good time to show you a couple of things. One that I can freely scroll through the channels. It will never tune away until I hit that tune button. And also the only one radio active at a time thing. So if we come up here and we flip to uh, Yadro or to the R863, we can only listen as well as transmit on one radio at a time. So we can't even be listening to this one while talking on another one. And if you flip your radio ICS, this one you do have some control over. You will still be able to listen in on your selected radio, but you'll be transmitting on either radio or ICS. And if you press your radio trigger now, it will say interphone up here to show you which one you're transmitting on. So. Okay, so finally we just need to contact the ground crew, which can be a little frustrating if you're used to the newer modules like the Hornet or the Tomcat, where you can just land anywhere and open this menu with Alt and Apostrophe. Then you can take some stuff off or put some stuff on, change your fuel, whatever you want to do, and then hit OK. We didn't get a response. We're supposed to hear copy from the ground crew. And you might think that, oh, well, maybe I just need to open my door. Well, you're still not going to get a response. You might think, oh, well, maybe I just need to use that interphone hotkey instead of the radio trigger. But nope, you're still not going to get a response. What you have to do is go up here and toggle this ICS radio selector to ICS. And then it doesn't matter which of the radio hotkeys you use, whether it's interphone or radio trigger. You're going to get interphone up here no matter what. And you can go in through ground crew and rearm and refuel. Or if you want, you can use the hotkey now with Alt and Apostrophe, and you'll get the same menu. So we're just going to take our bombs off, and we're going to add uh, a couple percent of fuel here, and hit OK. Request Request rearming. Copy. So there's our confirmation from the ground crew that they'll actually get to work and do stuff for us. Uh, you should probably leave it on ICS till you're done, just in case. There's the refueling complete. Now they're going to go through and take the bombs off of the pylons. But that's pretty much it for contacting the ground crew. Just remember that when you're done, you should flip it back to radio, or you won't be able to transmit to anyone else except the ground crew. So that's pretty much it for radio communication in the hip. I hope you enjoyed the video. hope I covered everything. If I got something wrong or missed anything, please let me know. And I'll see you guys next time.